What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day number 48 of Autodesk Fusion. All right, today what I'm doing is I'm taking those gears that we made in day 47 video, and we're going to uh, assemble those in such a way where we can get a, uh, a gear motion happening. So what do you notice over here is I've got my drop down menu. I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and open this back up. So I'm gonna show my data panel. And in my project folder, so click home button. So in my admin project folder, what I have is I have a file called gear assets. And so what I'm gonna do then is take these gear assets, throw them into a new assembly and unlink them. Now the reason you would do this is let's say if I am building something where I have that file already made. What you can do is you can throw in as many of those as you want and not have to change that asset. And so you get this kind of self-built library of items you know you're gonna use regularly. So what I got is I got my gear assets file and so I'm gonna have over here as gear assembly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down and drag this over here. And what it'll do is it'll throw in those three objects as a live assembly. And so what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to unlink this. And by doing this, I am going to, or break link, it is now its own separate thing. So this gear assets, um, that way I don't change what my gears look like. I'm only pulling them in, unlinking them, and then using them as needed. All right, so let's go ahead and go ahead and work on our assembly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable contact sets. So this allows me to tell Fusion that these three parts cannot move through each other. Because right now, if I were to try to move one of these, they can go through each other. And we definitely don't want that happening. So I'm gonna enable contact sets, right click, new contact set. And I want these three objects to not to be able to move into each other. So if I push on one, there we go. It just moves it on over. It doesn't go through it anymore. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move my slide out of the way, and I'm gonna focus in on these two gears. Now, so what I'm gonna do then is I need to be these to be able to rotate about each other. So I'm gonna line them up the way I need them to because I don't know what this spacing looks like. And that looks okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a sketch on this work plane, and now I'm going to capture position because I've got my gears aligned in such a way where they're gonna rotate with each other. If I were to click revert position, it would separate them again. So to show you what I mean by that, let's go ahead and finish this sketch. So when you move something, this little window or this little tab up here pops up. You can capture this position or revert it back to your original. So when you move things out of the way to kind of do what you need to do or inspect it, Revert will move it back to where you originally had it. You can capture that position, so it'll then say, okay, this is my new initial position, and this is where I'm gonna be working from here on out. So let's go back to my sketch. I'm gonna drop down, we'll get that out of the way. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna make two axles um, that are going to go through my gears here. So I'm gonna have the P key for project, and I wanna project this circle and this circle. Click OK, and then finish sketch. So what I now have is I have the placement for my two axles to move through. So I'm gonna pull and pull these out. Let's go ahead and make it a symmetric extrusion. And we're gonna make those as new components. Cause if we click join, my gears now have axles that are part of them, they're welded to, they won't move. So I'm gonna click OK. So this new component five, we're gonna call our axles. And then we're looking good. So now what we got so far is we need to now join the center of my gear with the center of my axle. And what this will do is, we're gonna also make that a revolute, about the, I believe this is gonna be Z axis, yes. And so what this is now saying is that this gear can rotate about this axis. Click OK, and we're going to do the same thing with the other one. I'm going to click on the opening of the gear, the center of the axle, and then click OK. 
Now, before we do anything else, before I move anything, if I were to try to move these gears, everything's going to go start to go haywire. So something has to be grounded, something we, that will not move. And we want these axles right here to be grounded. So you'll see this little thumbtack ending indent, meaning if I were to try to move these axles, I can't because they've been grounded. They will not move. So if I've done this correctly now, I should be able to spin my gears and they and they uh, work together. And that looks like some pretty good action there. All right, everything's lined up. We are looking good to go. So the next thing I want to do now is I want to move this in and have it interact in such a way. Oh, I, I just told it not to do something. So it did a boo-boo there. I want to have this interact in such a way where this gear then slides back and forth. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and line it on up. Push it up as far as I can. And then I'm also going to just try to just marry it on in there. And that looks okay. Go ahead and get lined up. Now, in order for this to work appropriately, it has to be sandwiched between the two things. So after I've lined it up, I'm going to create a new sketch and it's going to be on this face. We're going to capture that position because I don't want my pieces to move. So on this sketch, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a slide for my object to, I guess, slide back and forth on. And then we're going to extrude this all the way through. Make that a new component. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to move this body up just a hair. I want to, I want to close that, that gap. That's too much. Let's do one millimeter or so for that. Good. There we go. We want to make that a nice sandwich. Alrighty, we look good. So now let's go ahead and enable a new contact set between those two points. That way my slide cannot go through my rack and pinion system. So let's just call this slide. So we have, so far, these two pieces will be able to rotate with each other. We need this to go back and forth. We need this to be a slide function. So let's go back to join. Let's snap. There we go. Middle of that with the middle of this body. Nope. Let's try that again. Let's join. Let's get this. Make that inactive so I can click on the appropriate thing. There we go. There we go. So if you notice what I had to do there is I picked my initial uh, joint selections were wrong. So I had to click on what I want to slide. And then the second thing is what you want it to slide against. So there's just going to be a slider constraint along the X axis. Looks okay. Now we might have to rearrange it a little bit. We might have to move things up. Let's try doing that. Let's move this slider on up another millimeter. I think we can make it happen. Oh, let's try this again. Let's move this up as well. Oh, no, let's move the correct direction. There we go. Let's move up that one millimeter as well. Let's do 1.5. See if it'll that looks wonderful. That looks like some smooth action right there. Alrighty, now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take my slide and ground it as well. Capture position, grounded, everything looks good. Now, if I've done this right, when I click over here to animate my model, right click animate model, it just kicks that out one direction. So what we're going to do then is we're going to put a constraint where I want those gears to go back and forth. That way uh, my slide, my rack and pinion system doesn't kick it out permanently. And so what I'm going to do here is we're going to right click and edit joint limits. So the minimum here, 
I'm going to say you can kind of manipulate it how you want. I think it's going to be negative 30 to positive 30. I think that's going to be my, my window of success there. So let's try that out. Animate model, positive 30, negative 30. Give it a, oh, I went a little too far, far. So let's go back here. Let's edit those joint limits. Let's make it negative 20 to positive 20. Click OK. Right click, animate model. Give it a second to think because I'm asking Fusion to do quite a lot right now. And are we good? There we go. It's a little bit laggy on my end, probably because I have those uh, those gears too close to each other, and so it has to really think about what it's going to do. But we got our slide action going back and forth. What you can do is you can try to... Oh, there's our problem. So my gears right here are interacting. It looks like a little bit too much. So this move I did right here... Or I'm going to I'm gonna I'm gonna und actually undo some of those movements. So let's undo some of those movements and allow a little bit of that gap to be back. Reground that slide, capture position. Yeah, there we go. If my uh, I would say my interaction between uh, the the gears is too tight, Fusion has a hard time kind of grasping the concept of that movement. It's, it is a very, very soft system. And so I was asking a little bit too much of it of being able to do too many calculations on the fly. So what we got here is we have some good motion. We got a good back and forth. Let's try to figure out those limits now. So I'm going to animate model. Nope. Let's edit those joint limits. Let's set a minimum to Let's see, I want it to rotate to the right first. Let's do, let's do 60 degrees. Let's try that out. Animate model. No, too much. Edit joint limits. Let's do negative 30 to positive 30. Again, let's try that out again. Mm -hmm. All right. One more time. Nope, not quite. We were just a hair bit too far. So let's edit those joint limits again. Let's do negative 20, positive 30. There we go. Looking all right. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have a working gear system with a slide included. Um, ran into a little bit of problems there with those edit limit constraints and making things a little bit too snug. Um, but I found out if you just move things out just a hair, those things work out just fine. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Until then, I'll catch you later.